how data chain helps teams developers to better leverage AI models and kind of uh, extract value from unstructured data. When engineers work uh, on AI use cases, the biggest challenge is you have to work with uh, raw, raw data. Uh, PDF files, right, you need to extract some documents from PDF files. You work with uh, videos, you need to extract sometimes images or sometimes inside directly from the videos and such. So, and that's that process takes a lot of time. And in majority of the team, this is the most time consuming uh, part of the job to prepare good quality data. Hi, this is Yoz Apni Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Dimitri Petrov, CEO of Iterative. Dimitri, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been a while since we talked, so it's a good idea to just refresh memories of viewers. What is Iterative all about? Yeah, at Iterative, we built uh, tools, developer tools for ML engineers, for AI engineers. Uh, the company started with uh, project DVC, data version control, an open source project to version data, manage data, uh, and structure data, right? That's the important part. And uh, <clears throat> over the year, DVC become very popular product because you know, like there are no much tools <laughs> to work with unstructured data. I mean, images on your S3 drive, videos, PDF files, right? Uh, but over the year, we realized that it does solve like a really big problem of managing unstructured data, but that's not enough. Uh, the problem today is how to create a high quality data sets. So from like a thousand, sometimes millions, sometimes hundreds of millions of files, you need to find the file that you actually need for your like either uh, LLM application or for ML training to train your model. So how to find, uh, let's say 20,000, like the best images out of millions of images to train good model. Uh, so you need to work with annotations. You need to use annotations for that, right? Uh, or you can have like a bunch of models that you can run on top of your files and get some insight. And recently with the LLM wave, uh, LLM play a really good job, uh, do a really good job on curating data. So you can take your like PDF file or take your images, throw it to LLM, ask questions, and it gives you like a lot of insight. Uh, so you can curate and work with your data through the, uh, in a more quantitative uh, scientific way. And if I'm not wrong, you for, uh, folks are also announcing data chain. Uh, what is data chain? Data chain uh, solve the problem of data curation, of preparing data sets, high quality data sets. Uh, so in a nutshell, just like a framework, data processing framework, like a data frame, if you wish, uh, which designed specifically for AI workloads. Uh, for AI use cases. So it can work with the uh, files on your uh, S3 drive or Google Cloud. Uh, you can get the file and throw it to LLM and get some response and connect this together and use this information for curation data uh, down down the stream. Uh, it works out of memory, so you can work with like uh, millions and millions of uh, documents or uh, videos or images and such. So yeah, it's basically like data data preparation, uh, data curation framework, like a data frame, uh, specifically designed for AI for unstructured data. In the market, we these days talk a lot about Gen AI, LLMs as well. You folks have been doing AI for a long time. Talk a bit about your perception of Gen AI. Are you seeing any adoption by your customers or any usage of Gen AI by Iterative itself? or you're like, we are still focusing on the well-established AI tools and you know technologies to serve customers? Sure, so first of all, many questions, right? Let's do like one by one. <laughs> so the first thing is like AI, right? How it changed, what, why there's so much hype around this AI recently. Uh, I'm in this area for a while, right? I like had PhD like 15 years ago, I work at Microsoft as a data scientist for a while. Uh, I work with a startup and now we build tools for this uh, AI, ML, ML folks, right? What I see so far, tons of progress 
uh, happened like from like 2000, early 2000. Uh, and this pro- uh, progress is continuous growing, right? We have like more and more uh, use cases uh, that AI is solving. What changed in the two years? AI got to the level of, well, people can understand what it is. <laughs> Uh, because right now you can just, you know, like ask questions and it's answered you, uh, in a human way, right? You can throw a picture and ask like, Hey, like what, uh, summarize me the picture or how many people you see that on the picture, right? And it answered the question. So people like all the people in the world now understand the AI. If you take this AI like a five years ago, right? It was pretty close to the state. The problem is it was open only to professionals. <laughs> And you need to have like a decent expertise uh, to really understand why why this is so cool, why this is uh, such an amazing uh, thing. So that's the difference. Otherwise, we are keep going, we are keep improving this uh, model, state of the art. So that's a tremendous progress over the last 15 years since I'm there. <laughs> How data chain helps teams, developers to better leverage AI models and kind of uh, extract value from unstructured data. When engineers work uh, on AI use cases, the biggest challenge is you have to work with uh, raw, raw data. Uh, PDF files, right? You need to extract some documents from PDF files. You work with uh, videos, you need to extract sometimes images or sometimes inside directly from the videos and such. So, and that's, that process takes a lot of time. And in majority of the team, this is the most time consuming uh, part of the job to prepare good quality data. And we see like advanced team versus like a regular team that's advanced team understand this really, really well. And they put a lot of effort to prepare this, uh, this high quality data set. There are a lot of examples like this. Uh, for example, uh, DALI 3, right? The model which was released like uh, several months ago completely like breakthrough in terms of like how they understand the images, how they uh, extract insight from the images. But in fact, it was the same DALI 2 model, which was trained on a better data. They used ChatGPT, they used DALI itself to just curate data properly, uh, cover some outliers, removing the noise and such, right? And they get just by clicking data uh, model on a completely new level. Uh, the same you can find in Llama 3. If you read like a Llama 3 uh, paper, you'll see that majority of resources were spent for pre- cre- creating like a good quality data. And that's how they get like a completely new level of quality in the model. So the most advanced team are getting working on this really, really hard. That's the core part of the data preparation. The problem is there are no tools. If you want to work with uh, images, like what, what tools you will be using, except like your Python script, right? Uh, for structured data, there is a beautiful world of uh, uh, data tools, right? You can get your data to your data frame and start working with this. If the scale is huge, you push data to data warehouse, right? There is like a whole like a world of SQL is open. You can set up ETL to populate the data, update the data. There is a BI tool which gives you like summary information, some smart dashboard and such. When you work with images, when you work with PDF files, like what do you have? Pretty much like every single solution, every single use case you need to implement like from scratch by your Python script. That, that's a problem. And the biggest problem is it's not clear how to build this tool because there is a no data model behind. Uh, in traditional data, right, data model is a tabular data, like relation, uh, relations, tables, and such, right? Excel, it's a good example of tabular data. Uh, but what if you don't have Excel table, you have like a millions of, uh, or thousands of files, right? So that's, that's the problem that uh, the industry needs to solve. And what we are doing with data chain, we are saying like, let's start with a very simple thing, how to put uh, data in a, some kind of form of table uh, and we are saying this is like how how it should be. Like let's build something that looks like table. But the problem is it's not enough because you cannot put like a table uh, kind of like in a cell, whole file in a cell. You need to do something more, and there are complicated data structure there. Uh, usually they are Python based, and we are saying okay, you work with the Python. Let's put Python object on the tables. 
they're complicated, but uh, we can handle this under the hood, like how, the, how it works. And there is a whole, that's like one technical part of this. Second technical challenge here is how about uh, transactional model? Because in, when you work with transactional databases, you just, you know, crunch data here and there, but, and it doesn't fail or it's fail, you can just recover this operation. When you work with images, you can throw 10,000 images against LLM and someone in the middle it fails. And what do you do? Uh, run it again? Probably not. You don't want to like spend another day for this, first of all, and you don't want to pay for this again. Either you're paying like to ChatGPT or Mistral or you're running local Mistral, you're still paying a lot of money. Uh, it's get to keep the state and then continue to work later. So it's like data model changed and the execution way, uh, execution uh, model changed. Uh, that's what uh, AI brings to the data world. I mean, of course, you folks do a lot of open source, but when it comes to AI, ML space, it's a bit of a tricky field uh, with open source. So talk about why you decided to open source data chain and how does it help open sourcing data chain? Is it more or less like a display of your commitment to open source? Or is it also about there will be folks who will be able to leverage it as an open source project? Yeah, uh, first of all, uh... We kind of like open source is part of our DNA, if you wish. Uh, we work with on open source, with open source. We built open source for like more than six years, right? And the first project DVC start with open source and we introduce like a SaaS and paid version like uh, four years later. Uh, data chain started differently. We started with open source and SaaS, like a paid offering together. And we have both of those and we work in parallel on both of the offerings, that's very different uh, development uh, approach. Uh, but why we decided to open source uh, part of the data chain, right? Uh, it's because of developer, development tools, right? In DevTool market, uh, every good tool is going to be disrupted by open source sooner or later. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much what we're doing. Okay, we're we, we know that that's what people need is a good way of working with the data. They need a data model, they need like a little bit different execution uh, engine. Uh, but at the same time, we want to give this for everyone and say, hey, folks, please use this, uh, incorporate this in your workflow, uh, start working with uh, uh, moving your project. Uh, to this uh, to this new tool, tool set, kind of like we demonstrate like the way how you work with data in a, a AI workflow. While you talked about you know the kind of goal of data chain, but can you also talk about the impact it will have on an engineer, data scientist, or developer's day to day life, and how you see the larger ecosystem may benefit from it. So we predict that uh, on AI, uh, the, the trajectory is going to be very similar that, uh, like it was in machine learning in general. So first you get like, a new quality models. Everyone is excited, everyone's uh, playing with that. People are getting the first result like, really quickly. Uh, that was happens like with uh, decision trees, right? In like early 2000, everyone was, oh my God, that's completely new level of like machine learning, right? Completely new level how we can work with the data. And then uh, in 2000, I don't remember, like 13, I think, uh, Alexa and AlexNet came out, right? And people like, oh my God, computer vision problem solved, <laughs> right? Uh, because we can recognize like, I don't know, screws from like a crocodile, so like amazing. Uh, and now we get getting to the next and the next level, uh, but uh, what is happening under the hood, right? First, it's excitement. First, it's a new models. First, it's a first breakthrough, right? And next stage, it's becoming engineering. It's becoming very specific, uh, uh, not like artistic, but more engineering discipline, right? When people start working on a uh, uh, smaller improvement of the model, People are, are working on getting this to production. Uh, people focus shift from uh, just art and excitement to development, productionization, and data curation. <laughs> uh, so we expect that uh, AI will go to this stage uh, in the next 
I mean, right now, actually, it's 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 a going to this direction, right? From the art, it's it's moving toward the engineering. So it's it's uh, maybe like not good because you know, like we kind of uh, losing this like excitement about this. But that's actually really good for society because that's the way how AI will be delivered for the people. You don't want to deliver like a piece of art and put it to like an in front of millions of people, right? Because this like artistic model can do like crazy stuff, right? We know like a lot of examples, like when uh, chatbot sold like a brand new car for one thousand dollars, right, <laughs> online. <laughs> so you don't want to do this, uh, but through the engineering, you get to the level when you can confidently put your chatbot against like a millions of people, and they can build like a value for the business, uh, value for the society, and such. So that's actually very exciting uh, part uh, for society. I mean, of course, we are talking about this latest data chain. I know you may not be able to share, you don't want to share a lot of things that are already in your pipeline. We'll talk about that when it's ready, but just give us a teaser. What else we should expect from it really this year? Uh, with release of the data chain, uh, I would say like the work here just starts. <laughs> and that's of the, just the beginning of this uh, journey, right? I said, said we need these data frames for AI, right? We need like a kind of like a data warehouses for AI, right? When you can query, uh, query data, query your like videos on S3 drive, basically, and say, hey, give me like videos with uh, a daytime in East Coast uh, when number of people more than two, but less than like 10, right? So like this kind of like use cases, we just started working on this. And that's not only about like data chain, it's about the shift in the whole industry because uh, data stack is very advanced, super advanced, so many tools. Every every year you have like a dozens of new tools, uh, good competition, you can pick and choose a good data warehouse, ETL tool, whatever. When it came to unstructured data, there's a big, huge, massive hole. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. And today there's like a five, 10 startups are trying to attack this area, trying to invent something new, but it is going to be like huge. It is going to be like a huge part of the our data stack. And we believe that data stack and AI stack should merge. Should they, it should be like a two different, uh, they should complement each other. They shouldn't go like a different direction. I don't believe that's possible. Uh, so I expect to a lot more uh, new use cases, new tools, excitement about this. Uh, this kind of like engineering approach of, for building AI. That's what I expect. And from us, we have like a backlog for like, I don't know, one plus year just to like what we absolutely know it's must must be done <laughs> um so that's uh that's a big uh that's a, uh, the priority right now the other important part uh which we didn't cover today but it's like how to deliver this for enterprises because enterprises have like a very different requirements and the problem today is like first we need to solve the pain points of engineers ai engineers uh, ML engineers, and then we can get higher and higher to the to the stack and solve problems of the businesses. And today we we are solving some of that, like reproducibility. If you build a high quality data set, how to how to make sure you can reproduce this absolutely the same result? Uh, 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 but there is a lot more. That's security on data. Uh, that's uh, deployment of this model. That's observability, like a huge problem. Uh, that's not that's outside of our interest, right? It's not uh, uh, that's outside of our expertise. But there are tons of more problems needs to be solved in this area. Dimitri, thank you so much for joining me today, and of course, you know, uh, share updates on data chain and the whole uh, how where creative is heading. Thanks for great insights, and as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good questions, and uh, looking forward for more discussion about AI and fu the future of the AI. <laughs>